I was quite surprised about this, this question because I guess I'm kind of cooped up in, in our own world. I think we do it quite commonly. Um, but uh, to top it off, even two days ago, I was at a farm that I've been providing podiatry services for a couple of years, five years now. And I've done this shoe many times, and I was going to do it a couple of days ago. And they said, what do you call that shoe again? So I, I'm glad that they brought it up because it uh, basically I'll show you a picture over here. But it's actually a therapeutic glue-on shoe. Um, and there's, there are different types of it. There's, there's it. You have the keg shoe or the shoes that already come made, um, like the open shoes, the aluminum shoes. They come for foals, for racehorses, and therapeutics as well, with different types of uh, urethanes as well. Uh, and they also come as Series 2s, which are the custom-made or fabricated shoes. And those ones are the ones that we're going to spend a little bit more time on those. There's another one, which is Series 3, which is just the cuff, the fiberglass cuff, which you can adhere to your steel shoes, to aluminum shoes, to any, any kind of shoe that you want to use. So to speak a little bit about glue-on shoes, we have to go a little bit over what, what techniques are there. You know, you have the direct glue-on shoe, which is basically directly from the glue to the shoe, the shoe to the hoof, to indirect glue-on shoe, which is a shoe that have some sort of kind of structure, like in this case, the fiberglass, um, and add the acrylics to this, or the glue, and then this will bond to the wall as well. There's many, many type of different glue on shoes, and I'm just showing you a couple of pictures in there, um, just to famili familiarize everybody with some of this type of glue on shoes. And then there's also many other materials that you can do that as well. You have the polyurethanes, you have the acrylics, or the epoxy, or as many other people know around here, the Equilox. And then you have the cyanoacrylates, which is just the super, uh, the super glue. Not commonly used, but you'll come across those ones once in a while. This is just a graph that I found it was quite interesting. Kind of caught my attention a little bit. Uh, it just kind of clarified a little bit the misconception of, you know, glue on shoes are not as good as a nail on shoes. Th they both have pros and cons, and I'll show you on the next one as well. But as you can see on the top, the, the attachment strength, strength on those shoes are actually a lot stronger than the rest of the other shoes. You have the direct glue, the nails, and the taps, you know, the taps glue on shoes as well. And this is just a picture of showing you nailing and gluing through the hoof wall. And I'm not gonna get too much into it because I do like to do both. I mean, they have pros and cons and in this type of cases if you have a horse that doesn't have the quality or the walls for the nailing that's when you start getting into glue on shoes and again it's more a therapeutic thing to do when you get into glue on shoes we'll try to go through this real quick we see so I'm just going to show you uh, I'm not going to be able to get into the pathology of all of these cases but basically it's just kind of like a show and tell so you can have a preview of some of these cases so very common in farms in here is what we call the chronic grow late laminitic broodmares, which is the broodmares that you don't seem to have any issues with them, but for some reason, suddenly out of the blue, they're like dish walls, drop soles, uh, they have toe cracks, and these are the mares that, through all that vicious cycle, they're going from foaling, they're having complications that we don't notice, and later on, we start noticing those ones on the feet. And this is just an example of a case that I will have a video. So you, I don't know if you can appreciate from the lighting, but this is how you can see the altered growth rate between the growth rings on the hoof capsule and then a digital radiograph. Actually, this is a horse that I had a shoe at a clinic. Um, when I saw the, the radiograph, I was quite concerned because I felt like I could easily make it worse. But this is a video. Obviously, this is not a brute mare. Um, it's a gelding, but this is just a typical scenario. And we all know that when we start dealing with broodmares and, and you start acting or, or dealing with pain, we can't get achieved or we can't get done what we want to do. They don't ovulate, they don't get pregnant, and uh, this is just a common finding on some of these cases. And then this is a video, actually the shoe, this is the Sigafu shoes. Um, I'll get a little bit into it so you can watch how the mechanics and how we lined up with the coffin bone, the hoof capsule, and the glue on shoe, and this is what you turn out um, in this type of case. I'm aware that this horse is in the grass. I got called out one day. Uh, you, you, were, you were walking him on the gravel, and then you're trotting him on the grass. But trust me, I mean, this, this gelding was a lot better after we got done with the shoes. So this is just another example of a horse that 
as you can see in the radiograph, have no sole depth, um, pretty ouchy, not being able to walk around, and then you put one of those shoes, eight weeks later, so you can see the difference. It's pretty self-explanatory when it gets into that. Um, and then some of the diseases of the hoof, white line disease, these are some of the cases when we start using this type of shoes, glue on shoes. Um, obviously, it's quite unstable, so we try to come up with a shoe that makes the hoof capsule a little bit more stable and have these horses a little bit more comfortable. We have cases like canker, um, where we can come with the serious ones and we can develop a treatment plate or a hospital plate so we can have access to those type of cases as well. And then we'll have infections of the foot. Let's say an abscess going wrong. When I say when an abscess going wrong is, you know, you, you still want to have access to the sensitive tissue. So you can come up with a shoe that will have a treatment plate for those type of cases as well and have access to those. This is just a little bit more of an example. I thought it was getting late. People might be getting sleepy. So this is just a puncture wound where the navicular bursa was inflicted and we had to put a penrose drain and we actually have to add medical maggots or larva. If you can't appreciate those ones, I enlarge it a little bit. <laughs> so hopefully you don't have to go home to eat tonight. And then abscess going wrong, when the bone gets infected, you get into osteomyelitis, you get into sequestrum of those bones. In those type of cases, again, you have to come up with a therapeutic shoe. And obviously I'm trying to come up with cases that don't relate or have any of the horses here in town. This is um, a horse that needed a sequestrum. We remove it standing, we did surgery, and this is a previous case, which is just a draft horse, but we use the, the treatment plate because these horses also have chronic laminitis, so we were trying to come up with a hospital plate, a treatment plate, but also the advantages of having the, the therapeutics from it too, which is the mechanics. Hoof cracks, I mean, we can go on and on and on. We'll keep running through this, but this is just an, another example when we use one of these cuff glue on shoes and we added a felt pad, we expose it, we can actually treat it, we can add topicals to it and we can a have access while at the same time we're stabilizing the hoof capsule and hoping that hoof crack will grow with time. And then quarter cracks, we can modify, this is the series one and we riveted a welded plate or bar and actually so you can appreciate in this picture on the top, that wall is actually floated in that area so this doesn't put any pressure and actually this is a racehorse so he can go back and continue to perform so he doesn't lose any time on his training. And then conformation. I mean you'll see this quite often when you have all this manufacturer heel extension shoes and this fall that it was born with tendon laxity and they're still not enough. A lot of times we're able to modify, custom, fabricate a lot of these shoes as so you can appreciate how we can put a shoe on these baby shoes as well. And then horses that have angular limb deformities besides flexural limb deformities, this is a, just another example. And horses that might be a little bit upright or have a little bit of physitis over the knees, we put this uh, glue on shoes and falls that are just with the urethane. If for some reason they get quite comfortable, they have a little bit of a heel elevation, release the tension on the deep deal flexor tendon, and as you can appreciate with time, they start coming around as well. So there's many uses for this type of shoes. Um, obviously, we don't have the, the whole night to talk about them. This is another horse that is just knocking over the fat lot, and we come up with the shoe that has a little bit of a toe extension, a uh, little bit of a rails or heel extension, and you're able to see how um, we can accomplish um, how to help these horses just with therapeutic shoeing. Quickly through this, just uh, ultrasound with a lesion of the deep drill flexor tendon. The horse was quite lame to start with, and then we came up with the shoe, <coughs> modified the shoe slightly. I'm trying to play that video for you. As you can appreciate how this yearling was doing much better with that shoe after a couple of weeks. And then severe cases like this one, this is a horse that had a, a injury at the racetrack, ended up having to have his fetlock arthritis, and with time, this horse had an extremely successful career as a stallion, um, but unfortunately, eventually, age caught up with him. Hopefully, I was able to cover that question, so if you all have more questions, feel free to ask me or ask any of the panel at the end of the meeting tonight. Thank you.